In this project, we'll take a look at the process of building an LED acrylic sign using NeoPixels and CircuitPython. My 3D printed case houses all the electronics, making a simple portable sign. You can engrave just about anything on the acrylic and it looks pretty nice on a desk. Lucite is a light guiding acrylic that features light diffusing particles. This is great for edge lit engraving because it provides even illumination. This 8x12 inch acrylic sheet is a quarter inch thick, but you can get them in different sizes. I used my table saw to cut them out in several pieces. I made these 4x4 inches which is moderately sized to fit on my CNC machine's spoil board. I'm using the Other Mill Pro. This is a desktop CNC that's fully enclosed and features some really nice software. I removed the protective film from both sides of the stock and applied a few strips of double-sided scotch tape. Then proceeded to secure the acrylic to the spoiled board, making sure to align it to the lower left corner. I only need to use two bits for this project since all we're doing is an engraving and a cutout. For the engraving, I'm using an 80 degree engraving bit. With the tool installed, the other mill runs a probing procedure so it knows exactly where the spoil board is relative to the tool head. The engraving process is actually pretty fast, but this depends mostly on the artwork. The other planned software does have SVG file support, making it really easy to engrave vector artwork. However, I set this up in Fusion 360 because I needed some very specific toolpaths that were optimized for only outlines. If you're interested in how I did that, I'll put together a tutorial linked in the description of this video. It took about a minute and a half to engrave the CircuitPython logo with a feed rate of 1500 millimeters a minute and a depth of 0.2 millimeters. The engraving looks really clean and it produces some pretty nice detail. Next up, I'm using an eighth inch flattened mill to do the cutout. I set this up using a 2D contour with a similar feed rate. To reduce the risk of tool breakage, I made sure to enable multiple depths. So this follows the outline several times, cutting with a depth of just 0.2 millimeters, which is pretty conservative. Other Machine also has a helpful support page with recommended feeds and speeds, so I mostly referenced that. This operation took about five minutes to complete. This cut through a good amount of material so there was plenty of swarf to clean up with a shop vac. The other mill has removable panels on all sides so it's easy to get in there to thoroughly clean it up. I used alcohol to loosen up the adhesive from the tape and this just makes removing the part much easier than prying it off by hand. Also a thin spatula is very helpful. With a little bit of cleanup around the edges, the part came out exceptionally well. The artwork is actually mirrored because the engraving just looks much better on the opposite side. Proceeding to 3D printing, I used an Ultimaker 3 with some black PLA filament. No need for a rafter support material since I printed on the heated glass bed. I also used a 0.3 layer height because there really isn't much need for detail and this somewhat sped up the print time. I designed the two parts to snap fit together so that there's no need for additional hardware. The two pieces lock together, making a tightly secured enclosure. For the electronics, I'm using an Adafruit Feather M0 Express, an 8 NeoPixel stick, a switch, and a 500 milliamp LiPo battery. Check the learning guide for a full list of parts and materials. With most projects, I like to start with the on-off switch. I'll first prep the switch by snipping off one of the legs and trimming the remaining two short. Then I'll tin them with a bit of solder. I'll need to cut two pieces of wire and then remove a bit of insulation. Next, I'll tin the strands of wire with a bit of solder, then attach them to the legs of the slide switch. Add a piece of heat shrink tubing and now we can wire it to the Adafruit Feather. I'll secure the PCB to a pan of ice and connect one of the switch wires to a ground pin and the other to the enable pin. We can quickly test out the switch by connecting the battery and seeing if we can turn it on and off. Next, we'll work on wiring the NeoPixel to the Adafruit Feather. I'll need three more pieces of wire for the data, power, and ground connections. A piece of featuring tubing to keep everything together. Apply a bit of solder to make it easier to connect to the back of the NeoPixel stick. I'll need to wire them in this orientation so everything fits with the rest of the assembly. Now we can connect the NeoPixel stick to the Adafruit Feather. I'll connect ground to ground, power to three volt, and data to pin number six. That's pretty much it for all of the wiring. We can once again test out the circuit by plugging in the battery and seeing if the circuit can power on. 
Now it's assembly time. To secure the PCBs to the bottom cover, I'm using some short M25 sized machine screws. Starting with the NeoPixel stick, I'll fasten two of the screws into the PCB, then position it over the two standoffs in the center and hold it down while fastening until fully tightened. We'll do the same for the Adafruit feather, position it into place and hold it down while inserting and fastening the four machine screws. I used a piece of mounting tack to secure the battery next to the NeoPixel stick. Lastly, fit the switch into the holder and press it down to snap it into place. Now we can fit the case over the bottom cover making sure to properly align the two parts. Once in place, press the two parts together to lock them shut. I also added four little rubber feet to the bottom just to give it a little bit more grip. And that's pretty much it for the assembly. All that's left to do is to install the acrylic sign and that just clicks into place. Programming the Adafruit Feather with CircuitPython is fairly straightforward and relatively easy to do. Simply double press the reset button and drop a UF2 file to flash the firmware. The board shows up as a USB storage device, then simply drop your main.py file with accompanying libraries and off we go. Now we can connect the Feather to any computer and tweak the code without having to recompile, which is pretty dang awesome. If you'd like to build one of these for yourself, be sure to check out the learning guide for this project. There's a link in the description of this video or just go to learn.adafruit.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching and now go and make something.